Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our mandatory mask Sunday service. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, it is mandatory to wear masks now everywhere. Uh, Blaine Higgs has put that in place and we thank him for uh, considering our safety and the safety of those around us. So uh, we have uh, an upcoming Sunday service in October 25th and we're going to be live and here in the building. I guess I should have left this out. But our volunteers are going to have these fancy Hillcrest masks. So uh, when we call uh, you, and if you're volunteering, then uh, we're selling these for $5. But even still, uh, we got these made down at Lester's down the hill. And they did a great job. Matches our shirt very well. And anyhow, we will be ready, uh, hopefully, on October 25th for a live service. And if that is the case, uh, if things don't go a little crazy, because New Brunswick's bubble seems to be... We'll have to kind of watch and see how that goes. If things go a little crazy, uh, we'll have some contingency plans in place and, and we'll look at doing something else. So uh, for now, we're looking at October 25th as a live service and more details will be following that. Uh, there will be an opportunity to register online and uh, why don't we take a little look to see how that will be done. So let's watch the video. Hello everybody, this is Pastor Andrew here. I'm just going to show you how to register for both Trunk or Treat and for our in-person live service. So you begin by going to Google or whatever browser of choice. You type in Hillcrest SJ and it'll take you to our first one, hillcrestsj.ca. You can see our girl singers. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, as well, it'll bring us to this page here. So to register for Trunk or Treat, it's up here at the very top register information so you can left click on that it takes a truck or treat page so you just kind of scroll down and you just put your name in here uh, you can put uh, hmm, Richard maybe I did spell that right uh, email address some different ones there number of children number there submit your form so that registers you for that event then you go over here to the costume contest so uh, we're gonna be having a costume contest for the kids Here's the details, uh, how to do it. And this is where you upload your picture. And so then we'll have uh, permission to uh, use your pictures on Facebook. So you just kind of fill those out and then you can enter the contest and then we'll be voting online. So that's really exciting. So how do you register for the online uh, church service or sorry, in-person church service? So you go here to what's happening, left click that whole bit anywhere on here and it'll take you to this page here and it's this big blue button in-person service registration uh, yeah, left click on that and it gives us more details about the service and just go to registration site so you go to the registration site Boom. so this is ever event bright and this is powered by uh, I'm gonna say nucleus I could be off of that but it's uh, with our website so get a ticket because there's limited seating so uh, we have a soft cap uh, of numbers of people that we're able to host and so when we get to a certain point uh, we'll decide if we're gonna have uh, more than one service so you just click on this right here it's the Hillcrest event there's no charge just gives an idea of, uh, of what to expect so that we can prepare properly so you just have this big green button here hit register to the next page and so we've got uh registration for adults or 13 and up and children's registration for 12 and under because we're gonna have a cool activity pack for kids and they will have to remain seated the entire time so just keep that in mind but we just want to make sure we've got something for your kids uh on that day 
So it will be for October 25th Sunday. And you can see here uh, the date deadline to register is October 21st. So as things uh, progress, we will let you know we're watching very carefully uh, the whole COVID situation. So if for some reason uh, we decide that we, it's not safe to have an in-person service, uh, we'll know. But at the same time, it wouldn't hurt for you to practice and get used to registering this way because as we move forward, this will be the way we have to do it. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll get back to our service now. All right, so you got an idea of how to register online when the time comes. And uh, if it is this Sunday, there'll be a little little message right here saying, register now, open. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're just gonna be watching and seeing. So we'll keep you posted, right? Perfect, okay. Well, welcome to our Sunday morning service. I'm Pastor Andrew, if you haven't met me before, and we're here on the west side of St. John. And why don't we just ask our Lord Jesus Christ to join us, His Holy Spirit to join us, the Father to come and join us as we worship Him and learn more about Him today. Will you join me? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you that we have the opportunity to be alive, to draw breath, to be here today together. And we ask that you'd bless this service, bless our time with you, and Lord, fill our hearts with more of you. We pray this in your name. Amen. So a few announcements. Uh, youth group tonight, we have a, a hangout time. So we're not going to be doing a Bible study tonight. We're going to be kind of hanging out, playing Among Us and some other games. Uh, the teens all know what that is. So we will see you there tonight at 7 o'clock. And we'll just kind of hang out, see how everybody's doing. So, uh, some other things. I mentioned the October 25th service. Trunk or Treat Express or Trunk or Treat drive through I call it Express, is going to be coming uh, here at our church. And so you can register for that online as well. Uh, if you want to do offering, last week I had a little video and showed you how to give online. Also, by the office, we have a little mail slide, and you can put your offering in the old-fashioned way if that's your preference. Uh, we are so thankful you guys have blown us away. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Len Baird had made an announcement that for our benevolent team, uh, we were getting a little low on funds. And with the Christmas, Christmas exchange coming up soon, and that's where, as a church, we sign up people to help uh, help them in, in our, the people in our community. And we can only help as many people as we have enough finances to do it with. And so you guys have responded fantastic. You know, the more that we receive, the more we can actually give out. So if it's in, on your heart to help uh, families in our community for Christmas, then we are one of the churches that are set up to do it. Uh, we have a, a nice setup in, for the COVID-19 situation. Uh, some churches just aren't able to do it. And so the number of churches that are partnering this year have greatly diminished. And so we are thankful that we are able to step up and, and take part in that. And so we still need your help in that. Um, yeah, the, the more finances that come in for the benevolent uh, team, the more we can give to the families around us. So we're just excited at how generous you have been. Thank you. Thank you. You're empowering us to be wildly loving to our community. And, you know, you're part of this church. You're part of this uh, community. And hallelujah, we're making a difference. So I appreciate how you have given, uh, blown us away. So I know Cam and Jim, I was talking to them the other day, they're just like, whoa, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Pastoral prayer, why don't we have a, a little time uh, asking and invoking God to be with us in our different situations. And, and so I'm gonna invite you to just over here in the chat area uh, to type in some of your requests. If you have a private request, you can just type private or you can private message me on Facebook. I'm here live this morning on my home computer and uh, I'm with you. And so I'll pray for you if you send me a private message request. Also, we're gonna have some opportunities for you to write down uh, in the chat some of your requests. Sometimes there's power in just calling out in someone's name uh, or, or specifically calling out uh, to God in specifics, right? Being being direct to God, say, this is the specific thing I need. And so, uh, God can help us in that way. So with that, let us go into a little time of prayer and I'll just kind of direct you uh, when you can put some stuff in chat. Let's pray. 
Holy Spirit, thank you for filling us. Thank you for being our ever-present comforter when things are a little messy and when things are a little crazy. Thank you for being our God. Jesus Christ, thank you for going to the cross for us and, and making uh, the path to the Father available. And Heavenly Father, thank you that we can, can come to you through the, the power of the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus Christ and have access to your throne and be bold like Esther. Humble, but bold. You are our Father after all. And so, Lord, we come to you today with our, our concerns. And, Lord, we always have health concerns for people we love. There's always people around us, Lord, whose bodies are failing them. And so, Lord, we ask right now, and, and if you want to put in the chat right beside me here, the name of someone that you would like prayer for, for health concerns. You don't have to put what their health concern is. They may not want you to do that. But just put their name, their first name, um, or even a fake name. It's all right. God knows. Put their name. And let's pray for them together. Lord Jesus Christ, these names are coming up on the screen. These names are coming up in our hearts. Uh, Lord, those who are listening uh, via the phone. Uh, Lord, those who are here right now, Lord, there's a name on their mind, a person, a human being, Lord, whose body is breaking down. And Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come into that situation and heal them and bring change to their life. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, we also think of those who are looking for work, who need work. And Lord, right now, we just ask and say, thank you, God, for those who are calling out and asking for that, that, Lord, you're going to open the doors for them to walk through, that they might take care of their families. They might take care of their uh, uh, commitments. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, above all, we pray today that you would help us to hear from you, to be able to uh, hear uh, and be changed by your living word. So Lord, meet with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, so long we go to Sue and Jeff's basement, hang out with them for a little bit, and they're going to uh, have a song for us. So thank you, Sue and Jeff. Let's go over to you.
Well, thank you soon, Jeff. Really appreciate you doing that for us. Now we have a scripture reading from our very own Ruth Kay. So, Ruth, why don't you take it away? The cost of following Jesus. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side and a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Thank you, Ruth. My goodness, I just think when there's children that read scripture or children draw close to God, I can't help but think it must please him so much just to think that there's children that want to draw near to our Heavenly Father. I think it's awesome. So thank you, uh, Ruth, and maybe sometime we'll hear from Josh too. Anyhow, let us move on to our sermon, which is Attendance Matters, nor does it. Well, it wasn't too long ago that our schools had a pretty cool motto. Does anybody know what the motto was? Attendance matters. And that was their motto until COVID-19 hit. And then they said, well, attendance still matters, but we're just going to like, you know, make sure you're safe first. I really appreciated that. I think church has experienced something very similar. It used to be that attendance was one of the most important things about church. I can remember being a kid and, and you know, you got little gold stars and the thing your Sunday school teacher had and, and someone got an award for being there every single Sunday and I didn't get that. But, you know, I, I was there quite a bit and, you know, you have that one place missing a star and you're like, oh man, I don't know what's about those gold stars, but man, they feel, made you feel pretty special, didn't they? And so we've had a bit of a change in our view uh, as a church coming through this COVID situation, we realized attendance maybe isn't as important as we thought it was. Now, Hebrews says very clearly, forsake not the gathering together of the brethren. I get that. But when it comes to church, when it comes to your faith, I think there's something a little more important than attendance, and that's engagement. Now, can you imagine? Zach and Emily just got married not too long ago. Can you imagine if Zach was only in attendance in his relationship with Emily? Imagine if they were just attending or, or being together, but there was no engagement. When you are engaged, you take a relationship to a whole new level. You're no longer just in attendance. You're not just attending dinners together or attending movies together or attending the show together. You are engaged. You are reaching for deeper relationship. And that's what we need in church. We don't need to just come and be in attendance and watch a show and just have some teaching and then go the rest of the week and live like, like we didn't even go to church on Sunday. But it's about deeper engagement. I think even school is the same way. You know, you can attend school or you can be involved in all the clubs and all the activities and all the things that's going to make it more memorable. You're going to have deeper relationships with teachers or students. If you're part of the band, uh, you know, it's kind of like being part of a worship team at church. If you're part of that group, it's part of your identity. If you're part of the student council, it's like you're part of the deacons or if you're part of the trustees or, you know, there's different activities that bring you a little closer, that get you engaged. Now, not everybody wants to be on the school paper. Not everybody wants to be in the drama club. Not everybody wants to do all that. And I, and I get that. But in church, we've been asked by God to do more than just attend on a Sunday morning. We're called to be engaged. Now, not everybody can be on every single team. And we've got to focus and in fact, the focus of school is teaching. And in fact, the focus of Sunday morning, a lot of it is the preaching of the Word of God and the teaching so that, you know, I guess school would be, you know, the, the goal is to, is to create and to, uh, you know, to prepare us to be good citizens. 
And the church would be the same way, except preparing us to be good citizens of heaven so that Sunday morning is not just an attendance thing, it's an engagement thing. It's, we're part of uh, the Sunday morning, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's this engagement all through the week. And so, just like school again, you know, for the first few years of school, it's mandatory, it's obligatory. And then you get to a certain point, you know, you finish grade 12 and you go off to university or you go off to college, and then it, it's more about your desire and your vision for where you want to go in life. So, you know, Proverbs 22, 6 talks about, you know, if you raise up a child in the way he should go, then when he gets older, he won't depart from it, which is uh, a, a common truth, not a, a rule, but it's a common truth. So you go through 12 years of school, you're being held accountable, you know, they take attendance, right? Get to university, suddenly you're allowed to chew gum in school, you're allowed to wear a hat in school. If you don't show up, frankly, sometimes they just don't care. But if you're in, in elementary or if you're in middle school or high school, they take attendance, they've got different rules. But when you get to university, attendance no longer matters. No one makes you go. In fact, you can sleep in through every class and fail, but no one is going to call you. So you are responsible. And I think that happens as well. You know, uh, you get to ask that question, what do you want to get out of your education? What do you want to learn? How do you want to be prepared to be a good citizen? And the same thing happens to us in our faith. There comes a point where we need to take ownership. You know, mom and dad aren't going to wake you up to go to Sunday school anymore. Mom and dad aren't going to do it. It's like, you've got to make a decision that this is what you want for yourself. And then you have to ask yourself, is there something that I actually want from that? And so as we look at our Sunday mornings, what is being offered? Is it something for people to just attend? Or does it have follow through? Does it have something that where you can get engaged? Is there ways you can get engaged in the church community throughout the week? Is there ways you can engage your faith throughout the week? More than just attend a service. You see, there's a call. There's a call um, by God by the church for you to go deeper. Psalm 42, 7 says, Deep calls unto deep. Your heavenly Father is calling you deeper. And there comes a point in your life where no one's going to make you do it. No one can make you do it. We can draw the line in the sand and say, Hey, why don't you come a little closer to God? Sometimes we're afraid. I get that. I have never regretted drawing closer to God. As we draw closer to God, it's like some of these other things just fall off of our lives. And it's, it's fantastic. You don't plan for it to happen. The closer you get to Him, the more these other things kind of fall off, the more we grow, the more we are engaged with Him. You know, we have two goals. We have like an inward goal. There's an inward calling and an outward calling. And in the inward parts of us, like Philippians 3.10, is, is to know Personally, like it's part of our whole goal is to know more about God. And yes, on Sunday mornings, there's some good teaching. But we just can't do that on Sunday mornings. Where, where are we in the Word during the week? How are we into the Word during the week? How are we into teaching throughout the week? How are we engaged? You know, and the other part is not just the, the inward focus, but the outward focus. Out of what has happened in your life, how has the abundance flowed out into others? It's like the benevolent team, right? So we don't just ask for money to, to get in and hoard it. We ask for money so we can give it away to different situations. And so the same thing is you have all this teaching. And what happens in school after you have a teaching? After time of teaching comes a time of testing, right? And so that your, your faith can be proven, so that you can actually see what you've learned. Because um, God already knows what's in your heart. Sometimes it's us who doesn't know what's in our heart. And we need to go through the testing to know, okay, what do I actually believe when the rubber hits the road? Do I actually really trust God? Or, or how does that happen? So that's 2 Corinthians 5.20, the, the ambassadors for Christ. They go hand in hand. <laughs> and I think the church has been distracted by attendance. 
We feel that we've been successful if we've gotten people into a box. And the truth is, that's not really how Jesus saw things. There's a difference between being part of the crowd and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. There's a really interesting passage in John chapter 6. It starts in John 666. (gasps) John chapter 6, verse 67, actually. Jesus didn't check attendance. In fact, he said things that dispersed the crowd. He said, if you want to follow me, then you've got to drink my blood and eat my flesh. And he stopped right there. It's like, uh, what? (laughs) I say, what? I've got to do, uh, what? (laughs) You know, this is before communion has been established. Right? You've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Well, I'll tell you, that dispersed the crowds pretty fast. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, what about you guys? In 668, the disciples said, where else can we go? We know we're hearing the truth from you, even if we don't understand it. You know, so there's a big difference between the crowd and the disciples. There's a big difference between the crowd and those who are engaged. You know, Jesus dispersed the crowds with the truth, but he commissioned the disciples to go out two by two. Jesus fed the crowd, but the Samaritan woman was offered the living waters. And you know, it was the disciples who were invited to the opportunity to feed the crowd with the bread and the fish that that he gave them. And so we do that today as well. You know, we don't just give people our opinions. We seek to, to receive from the Lord first, and then we give people fresh manna, fresh from God what he has given us. That's why my, my sermon series, I have everything planned out till Christmas, and, and I'm, I'm totally wrecking my sermon series is because I'm feeling fresh word from God, and I want you guys to have fresh, <laughs> something fresh from God. Two times, 5,000 people, 3,000 people, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, there was an opportunity to be engaged in a solution, or there's the opportunity to be the crowd. You know, there are seasons where we need to receive. And, you know, it's hard on the, on the pride to receive, but sometimes it's important that we receive. And also there's seasons when we're called to share what we have been given. The crowd was served and the disciples served. There's a little bit of a difference. The attendees got served, but then the disciples, those who drew near, those who were engaged got to serve. And honestly, if I had a choice between being the one to receive the miracle of, of, the, of the fishes and loaves being multiplied, or being the one passing things out. I'd rather be the one passing things out. I would be doing the cool stuff, don't you? And you know, the people who are doing the cool stuff, who actually get to see God do his miracles, are the ones who are engaged. I want to see that. I want to I be there for that. The disciples, though, were also told to beware the yeast of the Pharisees. Because sometimes there can be bad things that can get into our systems and it spreads like yeast and causes a rise and causes a chemical reaction. Uh, the religious things, the striving, um, you know, uh, attending church work every Sunday as an obligation versus being engaged thinking, I'm going to church as a mission. You, you want to make church a mission? You want to make church, when, when time comes for us to go back to live, whether it's October 25th or not, you want, to, you want to up the stakes for church? You want to get out of attendance mode? I'll tell you how to do it. Ready? Invite someone. Invite one of your friends or one of your families. Make it count. Woo! Everything matters then. You're suddenly more engaged than ever before. You bring someone with you to church and it's all of a sudden you're like, who is the one that's going to greet my friend? You suddenly have a personal stake in the quality of what happens on Sunday morning. Whether it be the message and the truth that's presented, or the way that the church is a loving family, or if it's not, it suddenly matters. Suddenly you are engaged because the stakes are so much higher because you've taken the risk to actually invite someone. 
or even if you share this video, that's a risk. And suddenly it matters. Suddenly you're engaged. Have you shared this video on your page for your friends and family to look at? Whew. You know, you don't have to, but I'll tell you, it's a whole lot better than when people share uh, these things. Like if you love Jesus, share this with 10 people. It's a picture of a chicken or something. I, uh, yeah, that's okay, I guess. <laughs> but you share a video, you share uh, an invite to the Hillcrest Fence and Family page. You, you, you. Suddenly, the risk is different. Suddenly, your engagement level has changed from being an attender, a watcher, a viewer, to suddenly being part of God's team, part of the plan of of getting the gospel out. Good news. Great news. Hallelujah. Thank God. God uses broken vessels. I love this. Like this broken jar, there's a little candle holder. It's perfect. God can take you and you could be broken. And maybe you were originally intended to, to hold water and you were broken by whatever. Well, now you're going to hold the light. God uses broken vessels. And as a church, we are on a mission. And our mission isn't all about us soaking in information that we'll never use. It's, it's about being engaged and having our faith alive so that we're touching the lives of the people around us. Church is supposed to be a hospital for those who follow Christ and those who don't follow Christ. It's supposed to be a place where people can go to find hope. You know, it's uh, a, a doctor is engaged. They're not just attendees. There are attendants at church or at hospitals, and, and we need those people. There's porters and different attendants and people that watch, but you need doctors. You need people who are engaged. You need people who are working to bring health back into your system. We are hope bearers, Romans 15, 4. We are torch bearers like this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 to 21. Yeah, I put your light up like, a, like the city on a hill. In the darkness, we are bringing light. And, you know, unless we turn the light on or, you know, remember the old song from Sunday school? Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> Anyways, maybe you don't know that song, that's fine. We're cross bearers. Luke chapter 9, verse 23, we're supposed to bear our cross daily. We're supposed to surrender ourselves, surrender our comfort, surrender our rights in order to be engaged in real, genuine relationships with the people around us and with our Heavenly Father. We're peace bearers, Matthew 5, 9. You know, our, our, our I call them our, our gang tattoos. You know, I, I've watched a show, uh, I shouldn't admit this, but I'm going to anyways, it's called Sons of Anarchy, and it's not really for kids, um, but it's about a, a biker gang. And I've really discovered in the last while, even when I was a youth pastor, that you know what people really want? They want a place where they are going to be loved sacrificially, honestly, genuinely, loyally. And, you know, and, and these the people in the motorcycle club, they're all, you know, like they're all hugging each other, like these manly men. I'm like, oh, manly men hugging. Oh, all right. But they're, I was like, they're always making the comment, if you need anything, you simply ask, we're your family. And they mean it. Oh, isn't that what you want? I mean, don't you want your friends to be that kind of loyal? <laughs> well, if you want friends like that, then you've got to be like that. And so our, our, our gang tattoos are, are the scars on our bodies. Scars on our hearts. And the healing that has happened is a testimony to our faithful God at work in our lives. The, our brokenness and the fact that the church is still around after a thousand years, after two thousand years. Come on, it's got to be a miracle. The church is broken to pieces. Man, we're a mess by times. <laughs> Simply the hand of God. The church... Is God's plan. I mean, yeah, I, his bride, he calls the church his bride. And uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 22 and 23 talks about the church being his bride. And we're a broken bride. 
man, we're a bit of a mess. Like, uh, if you ever read the book of Hosea, like his wife put the hoe in Hosea. I mean, it was, um, uh, she had uh, some major issues. But by the end of the story, she had been redeemed. And she was a beautiful wife. And, and so the problem is we can be really hurt by broken people. Broken people bite. They don't mean to, they're broken. They're sharp edges. And, and God is working on us. As, as iron sharpens iron, so brother sharpens a brother. And you know, some of those edges, we need to be sharpened down. Or filed down, so they're not sharp. The church, love it or hate it, is God's plan. I, I don't always like how things go in church, but I've decided that I need to be part of the solution. I can't just look at church and slam it and say, ah, oh, this is terrible. There's broken people in there, a bunch of hypocrites. Well, you know what? I got to get in there. If this is God's plan, I need to be involved. I need to be engaged. I need to be part of the solution. I need to be wildly loving. I need to go above and beyond um, what is normal in love so that the community we're building here is a safe place. It's safe for you to be broken. It's safe for you to make mistakes. It's safe for you to be human and real and, and to be redeemed or be in the process of redemption. Zechariah chapters 9 to 14 talk a lot about Professors who don't care. Professors of, well, I would have been called the gospel back then, but prophets, leaders, you know, or if you're in university, professors sometimes don't care. My experience at Crandall was very unique, by the way. They cared. Acadia uh, Divinity College, they cared. ASK, they cared. I guess Christian universities have uh, lived what they preach, from my experience anyways. But I know as well that you can go to other universities and get a class of 400 people. And it's not that the teachers don't care about what they're teaching. And it's not that they don't care about their students. It's there's 400 faces there and they're not going to be responsible for you. We need to be careful not to allow the broken bride or broken leadership that has hurt us, keep us from the plan that God has. We cannot be afford to be distracted. Now Matthew 7, 15 says, sometimes uh, there's leaders that are wolves and they're just fleecing the flock. And you know, you need to really consider who you're submitting yourself to. Is it leading to life? Is it leading to health? Is it leading to, uh, not necessarily the blessings of God, but is it leading to uh, life? And are you able to use your gifts? Are you flourishing? Um, you know, sometimes it's, we have to make changes and sometimes we need to look at our situation and say, you know what, this isn't the best situation. We need to make some changes here. Don't be distracted by your pain. Sometimes God calls us to walk through the pain to get to where we're going. And there's other times God's like, well, man, you need to get out of here. <laughs> but there is a mission. There is a mission and you need to know what is the mission. The mission is to have great attendance on Sunday mornings. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> or no, nowhere in the Great Commission does it say, I would like you to make buildings and fill them with people and warm the pews warmly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Second Corinthians 520 talks about we are ambassadors. Ambassadors leave their homes. And they go somewhere else. And they represent. And that's what we're called to do. Matthew 28, 18, 20. The Great Commission. The going forth. Make disciples. Baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and the Father. And do not forsake teaching them the things that I've taught you. Church is not a Sunday service. Sunday service is, is, is when the church gathers. The word service means to serve. It's not about attending. It's about serving. And if you come to a Sunday morning service, come with mission. You know, Missio Dei, the mission of God. We are his ambassadors. But he's been the example. Do you remember we celebrate Christmas? God 
on mission, left the comfort of his own home. Jesus came as a little baby so that we might have relationships. Things could be restored. We are to cooperate with God. More than just watch, more than just attend, we are called to be the church. You are the church. You are the church right now. And so I, I'm going to leave you with this question here. How are you being the church right now in your life? How are you being the church in your life right now? I want you to think on that and pray and ask God, am I engaged or am I just in attendance? And I think you'll find that by listening to him and saying, and if you submit yourself to him humbly and say, Lord, I want to be more engaged. I don't want to just be in attendance of the relationship. I want this relationship to go somewhere. I want it to go from engagement to, to, to marriage, to, to intimate relationship with you and genuine relationship with people around me. Lord, help me to know how to do that. And I'll tell you, if you submit yourself to him humbly, he will walk you through that. And you'll be on one of the most incredible adventures of your life. You will get to multiply fish and loaves. In other words, what God shares with you, he'll give you platforms with which to share. You'll look at the scars in your heart, which is a testimony to who he is. And you'll be able to share with others because of your hardships that God is faithful. I want to leave you with that for now. I want you to just recognize that we're not called to just be attenders. We're called to take things to the next step and to be engaged. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we so desire, we so desire to go deeper in relationship with you. Lord, we want to know you more. Lord, we know we're broken. Lord, we pray for the bride of Christ. Lord, we pray for the church. Lord, we know she's broken. But Lord, restore us. Help us to live genuine lives of love. Help us to be wildly loving. Help us to be engaged in the relationships around us that, Lord, they'll be glad we're in their life and they'll see you acting in our lives. And they'll want to come to know you because they like what they see in our lives. Lord, come, come, come in our lives. Be our Lord. Help us to be engaged with your mission. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Well, if you want to take a practical step, share this uh, service on your Facebook page and uh, do that as uh, a step of faith of sharing if you've got if you've gotten anything out of this message today if there's been fresh uh, manna if it's been loaves and fishes multiply it take it and multiply it share it on your wall share it for your friends and family to see and uh, maybe they'll see God in a whole new way thank you so much for being here with us this morning just pray that the Lord's face would shine upon you, that he'd cause uh, your life to be blessed as you surrender to him. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you on Tuesday for our Bible study. God bless. Take care.